So an easy way to kind of annoy box cutters orientation system is we'll take this cube, use hard ops and just roll a bevel and then we'll put a sub D on it. And then after that, we will go under add modifier and we will just add a smooth and we'll just play with the smooth and just keep rolling it. Not so much. It turns into a portal to another dimension, but enough that it just becomes a more rounded smoother version of itself so you know it almost looks like the same cube except it's a lot different so if we were to just draw a box you can see that for one we need to bypass sorting in this scenario we don't want to put bevel back on top of subdiv in this case and also we lost our smooth there we go so now we're back to where we started where things just get insane with the orientation. We're able to draw normal there, but we're not able to draw normal here. So, you know, if you were, you know, really OCD with your box cutting, this would be something that would drive you crazy. And for that reason, line box exists. So whenever you're in box, there's now a toggle to quickly toggle into line box if needed. And you just draw a line and you extrude a box. And this is a very quick way to be able to override orientation if needed when you're attempting to draw a box. And this was on the whiteboard for the longest time as an item that I desperately wanted to see happen inside of box cutter. So the moment that it was created, I was like, wow, we really have to get this release out because, you know, if we were to compare and just say we were making a box, I would be drawing this box with poor orientation and then I would have to press R to rotate, possibly shift to live in order to get things adjustable. Instead, we have the functionality of being able to orient and position our box on the go in the form of a line. So the idea, basic enough, seemed like it um, was one of those things that was a no brainer. And the moment that it was added, it was like something that definitely needed to be put out immediately for people to begin experimenting with of course linebox can get a little weird you know uh, most new tools that we create generally require a few passes of refinement in order to get absolutely correct but it is definitely a start in a much better direction whenever it comes to getting alignment resolved in fact i see that we still haven't added the ability to have local as part of our rotation inside of line box as a calculation as well. So our work is still cut out for us whenever it comes to this. However, you know, hard ops always has your back when it comes to just scrolling backwards and just locating the shape that you're needing in order to, you know, bring it back and make quick adjustments. But I just wanted to show kind of line box in action in a scenario in which I can quickly make it fail. So let's start it over. And let's talk about line box again. I'm still under box, still under line box. So that means if I draw a box or a line, it will just start out making a line box. At this time, it currently doesn't support shape scrolling or the ability to recall previous shapes, but it does have the added bonus of not only being able to draw a line, but you can also press W and actually draw a wedge. So wedges is one of those shapes that I became a big fan of. I always wanted to be able to draw wedges inside of box cutter. And so this is one of those things that, you know, just comes in handy at those times where you just really need to just kind of clip an angle and just cut a quick wedge into a surface. And that's really what line box is all about. Of course, its purpose is um, still to be completely implemented. I still have other things that I would like to use line like things to um, align and, and orient in order to uh, uh, bring back other functionalities that were missing from our 2.79 counterpart. But this has been just a um, quick demo of just line box in action. So let me at least get this wedge to fit. I can't leave a video with a conundrum in my face. So we're just drawing lines, cutting wedges, just really just getting that randomness that can only come with experimenting with the tool that allows you to cut at the speed of thought. So continuing on, we're just going to cut a few more wedges. We see how the shading is breaking down. We can just 
shift click sharpen in order to bring up the auto smooth adjuster where we can just roll the mouse back to something a little more desirable getting us the result that we want and even at this time you are able to extrude out a box press w to change it back to line box in the middle of extrusion if needed and you can even do something like press y in order to extract it which will extract this surface jump me into custom and then allow me to reuse that snippet of geometry however I'd like wherever I need it. So Linebox definitely has some untapped potential that's worthy of you know just getting in there and experimenting with to find out what it has to offer you as far as workflow is concerned. But being able to just quickly orient a box to a shape is just one of those things that just can't be beat. Another way that I enjoyed testing this tool was we'll just delete this box and insert a cylinder through our shift a menu and I'll press Q to sharpen and let's say we wanted to just really work this shape from an angle repeatedly this is something that when it came to box there were just too many keystrokes involved in the process of of creating and there were too many systems that were needing to be created in order to properly deal with orientation in the at the speed that you're seeing at this time. So while we would like to cover it from all angles and ensure that this tool is at its complete best whenever it comes to whatever angle you could possibly be attempting to approach a problem via, we also want to provide a very fast option in the meantime that you know definitely solves the problem once and for all for you know professional use when it comes to just getting in there, getting the shape and you know making it through your workday without a whole lot of stress involved so you know that is a lot of what line box is all about as you can see I'm able to just keep working this angle from this angle without second thought I mean if I wanted to mirror this to the other side I would have to probably look at this from view and then use a view align mirror in order to mirror it to the other side in fact just to um, you know entertain you guys let's do that so you know to cycle over into hard ops for a moment I'm just going to uh, jump to the cutters collection press alt h and we're just going to just i don't know select any random shape press alt x and we don't we want to include active and multi mirroring and we want to mirror across the view and we want to use the 3d cursor to do it so we'll just mirror across and if we jump back to layer one we see that our work is complete so if i wanted to mirror this across all four axes i would just press alt x and we don't want to be in view. There's a hotkey that actually resets it called X. You press X, sets you back to the default settings. And right now it's actually set to close after operation. So let's say I don't want to do that. Well, I would shift click to mirror it once. And then because I want to close it after this next operation, I'm not going to hold shift and we'll just mirror that across. So now we've really created this angular four-way split. I mean, of course I could have worked it from the front, but the thing is, is now you're able to work things from any angle thanks to the power of line box. I'm really only just scratching the surface on a lot of these videos. I'm trying to put a self-imposed time limit in order to keep them short and fairly cursory. But I hope this video suffices as a way to get you into using line box for solving your angular cutting needs today.